Good evening, it's Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. Uh, today is the 9th of April, 2007, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at some stocks for trading tomorrow. I've just got three of them here, uh, two longs and one short. We'll start out with STKL. I had mentioned this one briefly last week as a potential short squeeze uh, candidate, and this stock has a very large short position in it. In fact, it's 7.1 million shares that had been sold short as of March 15th and not yet covered. So if you look where the stock was March 15th, right around this area, and go back in time to see where that stock has been and try and figure how many of those shorts might be in a winning position, you can see that most likely none of them are actually making money unless the only people that have actually made any money might have been shorting it back in here over the last two weeks or so. But it doesn't look like they were very aggressive because we had increasing volume on the way up in the stock followed by a diminishing volume on the return move to this prior level of resistance near the 11 and a half, 1175 level. That resistance looks as though it's become support in here. So we have the potential, in other words, for what I think could be a pretty good short squeeze. Uh, maybe not as big as the one we've seen DNDN lately, but we do have the potential for a short squeeze because the only way to cover your losses or to uh, minimize your losses is to buy the stock back. And if you look at the average daily volume on this thing, it's only 475,000 shares. Let's say it's a half a million shares. That means that of the 7 million shares that have been sold short, not yet covered as of March 15th, it would take the sellers, the short sellers, approximately 14 days to get out of this stock at, based on average daily volume. So just their buying alone, it would take them 14 days to get out. Now, they're probably not going to get all out at once unless we get lucky and there's something big that happens and, and the stock rides up the way uh, DNDN did, their Dendrion. But just a little bit of their buying added to the technical buying that we're going to be doing based on a good chart, this stock has the potential to really get going to the upside, I think. Here's uh, what I think we should uh, look for here. So we're looking at a 10-minute time frame. You can see it looks like this uh, little trend line has been important on the way down. And it breaks it right here at about 12 bucks a share. So let's look to get long above that stock and above the uh, above that trend line rather and above uh, Monday's high at $12 a share. We'll buy it above $12 a share. I think you don't need to risk much on this. Set a stop down about $11.85. So that's just 15 cents of uh, potential risk. And my target is going to be $12.5 a share. Let me tell you this though. That target I think is very conservative based on that 7 million shares uh, of short interest. But it does make sense from a risk reward standpoint that it should return to the scene of these recent highs at 12 and a half. And for, for risking just 15 cents, a reward of 50 cents would be a, a trade definitely worth doing. But I would say hold on to at least a good portion of those shares if it does get up towards that level. Because again, the, the, the shorts could really be in for a world of hurt with that stock. Travel Zoo has uh, broken past resistance um, about two and a half, three weeks ago. Since pulled back, that resistance has been tested a couple times and seems to be acting as support right now. Today, the stock rallied on pretty good volume and it got a little bit extended. So what I want to see here is a pullback towards $37.30. A pullback to at least $37.30 is what we'll look for. And then to buy the stock above $37.50. Our stop would then go at $36.94, so down in this area. And uh, that would be a risk of about 56 cents. So it's a bigger risk in terms of absolute dollar amounts. But this is a risky stock the way it trades very volatilely. So I'd say cut your share size down to a smaller than normal position anyways. But the upside target is going to be up at $29 a share. So even risking 56 cents a share, um, we have a target that's still $1.70 away. So that would be, make for a very nice trade. Uh, buying it above that 35, uh, uh, that 50 cent level would be a dollar, dollar fifty rather. Um, so, anyways, we'd be looking for at a 56 cents worth of risk for the opportunity to make about a dollar fifty, and uh, in in Travel Zoo, so a little bit better than a one to three risk reward ratio in Travel Zoo. The last stock we're going to talk about is a short sale candidate. I think the market's probably due for a little bit of a pullback here, and maybe we can scalp something out quick in shares of Broadcom. You can see the stock looks like it's uh, rallied up on diminishing volume in here recently, and uh, on Monday here it pulled back on a little bit heavier volume. So looking at that 30-minute time frame, you can see it looks like it's broken through some important support, 
and uh, we're going to, in fact, use a stop just above that level. But uh, what I want to see is a stock to move down towards about $31.5 a share. Um, so the way I'd like to see this one pan out would be for a rally first up to about 32.55 or so, and then we would sell it short as it gets weak and drops below 32.45. Our stop would go at 32.77, so just above that little peak right there. And um, target of 31.50, like I said, that would mean that we'd be risking 32 cents for the opportunity here, hopefully to make about 95 cents in a short of Broadcom.